What's up, YouTube? So, what we have is a 2006 Lincoln Navigator. Got the 5.4. And it's doing a lot of spitting and sputtering, loss of power. Uh, loss of power. Sputtering at idle. Very rough idle. And it codes. I'm gonna pull them again for you live. We'll do it right now. Actually, I'll give you a chance to see. Shit. What's up, what's up? We have here today a 2006 Lincoln Navigator, which is the luxury edition of the Ford Expedition, so they should be about the same. I'm searching for the OBD port now. Damn, where is it for? So anyway, uh, this one has a rough idle. It's, it feels like it's missing. I lost the power. I believe the codes I had pulled them once before was a uh, P0021 or 0022, which is a VVT um, solenoid. So I just checked and it looked like mine have actually been replaced recently. Uh, I'm trying to pull it up now. Let y'all get that live in effect. There we go. Yes, it is a link camera. Oh, 13 damn codes. Your P305. What else we got? Oh, we got some work ahead of us. I might not be doing this shit. Just might have to go to the shop. P021. P022. Intake cam position sensor timing. Random misfires. Six, seven. Uh, O2 sensor stuck. 22 again. Misfire again. 305 again. 07, 08. O2 sensor again. 305 again. Uh, so, I'm hoping, I'm in great hopes that uh, the uh, P21 and 22. Replacing those solenoids or those uh, those sensors will cover my random misfires. And I'm hoping, with all that said and all that done, that'll clear my emissions. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm basically going to I'm change the oil, because from, from what I read, dirty oil clogs up the filters and doesn't allow the sensor to read properly on both sides. So it's bank one and bank two. I'll let y'all see. Get over here. All right. So Lincoln 5-4, it's 2006. So this is the air filter box. So the sensor we're looking for is right here. Let's try to get in there for y'all. That's the sensor. Leah's bank one, driver's side. We go over here, battery side, passenger side. This one will be bank two. So it should look like this. This should be oil filter cap. So if you look behind your oil filter cap, it should be right there. As you can see, it looks like someone replaced this one recently. But uh, it's gonna get replaced again. So we'll check the oil. I looked at it once, but for the sake of the video, we'll check it out. to see how black that really is but that's dirty get over here in the light that's not dark oil that's just dirt so rubbing on the paper towel yeah it's pretty damn dirty and you know it's dirty once you uh once you wipe the stick the stick is stained. That's where you know it's dirty. So you should be able to see that stain on that stick. But anyway, get back in here. I'm gonna replace both of those sensors. I'm gonna do an oil flush, oil change, and I'm in great hopes 
that this is gonna correct my problem. If not, this is gonna need a tune up. And just gonna have to do what I gotta do. This vehicle has 206,000 miles. Now when I first picked it up, it did the little skipping and loss of power a little bit, but not too much. It kind of powered through it. So I'm hoping that uh, that'll correct my issue because the loss of power and the misfire and all of that is also linked to the uh, P0021 and the P0022. So we'll get some clean oil in here, do an oil flush. We'll do the oil flush and then clean oil and filter. And then um, we'll change them out. And I'll get back, we'll go for a test ride. Matter of fact, Make sure nothing in the way. I'm gonna let y'all see how bad is misfiring. Cold start. Well, now I won't do it. Put you on front street. You won't do it. Let me see if I put it in gear. The dog y'all be on the trial. It was missing so bad to the fact that I had them to pull over so I wouldn't get ran over <laughs> or I wouldn't get hit. Pull over so I wouldn't get ran over and hit while I was trying to bring it home. Like it didn't do it for like the first hundred miles, but started up, cut it off a couple times. It just got progressively worse. So the oil is dirty. We'll do an oil change with the filter. The filter doesn't look like it's anywhere near new. So whoever did it just replaced the sensors and didn't do the oil, so might just have dirty oil and clogged up. I know these five fours are very, very finicky with oil changes and, and how things need to be running. So I'm gonna do that and I'm in great hopes that it's gonna correct my problem. So I'll get back with y'all and I'll continue this video. So motor flush. My mechanic swears by this stuff, man. especially for these uh, five four B3 four motors that come in the uh, F-150s, navigators and expeditions. So the direction says to put it in there, add it to it, run it at normal speeds, do not drive the vehicle, and then flush when it's hot. I've done this several times on these Ford engines and they do seem to help. Some of them need more flushes than others, but they do seem to help. I've never driven it. I have run it uh, longer than five minutes and it didn't really hurt it, but I've never drove it. So today I'm gonna put this in there uh to help clean the oil valleys and stuff like that and then replace the um vvt solenoids and that should correct my p what is it p 21 and 22 so here we go this is more difficult than i thought I'm trying to hold the damn camera let me get a funnel be right back let me get let me get a funnel let me grab me the funnel real quick funnel 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 here we go. I got fish grease in it. Don't want fish grease in that John door. All right, here we go. Here we go. Got my phone. Got my phone. Got my motor flush. Straight in there. I ain't gonna front. Shit look like mystery oil to me. Or some light transmission fluid. Probably got a lot of the same properties as transmission fluid. We're gonna add the whole bottle and let it run for the five minutes. We'll keep it a book. I might do 10 minutes. Hope now I'll test shit up. So that's it for the motor flush. The oil is still full. We checked it earlier. So we're about to see. Put it over there. Look at that battery, man. So when I disconnect the battery, I'm gonna make sure I get all that cleaned up. Look at all that corrosion. That can't be good. I'm surprised the damn thing starts. So, get that. Put that joint over there. Put our cap back on. 
this thing on. This thing on spit and sputter. Five minutes any damn way. What's up, bro? All right, let's see. Let's get the key in there. Let's see what we got. It's alive! Thirteen goddamn codes. Thirteen goddamn codes, man. Thirteen. Fucking four, dog. What I wanted to do was, I wanted to uh, put some diesel oil in there because it has the same properties and detergents in it, similar to a uh, transmission fluid. But I was strongly advised not to do it because the oil galleys for these V3s are just too, way too small and it wouldn't uh, allow the uh, oil to pass through like it's supposed to and I end up really causing some damage. So I'm gonna go back with uh, uh, the 520, which is recommended, and I'm gonna add some 020 to it, which is gonna be even thinner. So we're gonna see. So we're right at about just starting out. Let me just check the clock. Either way, I'm eyeballing it. After I shut this off, we're gonna see. I'm gonna check the time and see where I'm at. And uh, I'm gonna drain the oil. And I'll get back to you after I've added it or after I've drained it and let you guys see what the stick looks like after I've ran it. Uh, no, I think I'll change the, uh, I think I'll change out the, uh, the solenoids out first. Yeah, I might change the solenoids out before I put oil in it. That might be better because it's gonna be some debris and some stuff in the solenoids that's in there. And we want all that to come out. But it's already checking. It's already it's already acting up. I told y'all earlier, it's already acting the food. Look at that shit. Come on, stay on. Stay on, goddamn. We're struggling. I hope I don't tell nothing else. Y'all let me know what you think, man. I'll get back to y'all. Peace. All right, so we back. Got the driver's side out. Is a uh, T25. So this is my first time kind of pulling it out. Let's see. Just let y'all see it, but it did look pretty shitty down in there. This one actually doesn't look. Like it's that old. Looks like somebody actually replaced it. So the bottom side. I don't know if that means anything to y'all. I honestly don't know. The screen is too fine to uh to see. But anyway, this uh this rubber boot, which I'll be replacing set like right there and i just use the widest tip needle nose that i could find and a small panel tool took the panel tool kind of pushed it up a little bit on both sides so that i can grip it with my needle nose hold on that's not even the ones i use i use this one gripped it, pulled straight up so not to break the sensor, used my T25 uh, torque screwdriver. I did try this little setup right here with just a nut driver and extension and T25 socket, but the socket was too wide to fit on the side of the, uh, to fit on the side of the the, uh, the bolt. I'll show you. So basically, it sat down in there like that. I was coming, try to get my camera again. I was coming from this direction and I kept missing it. <laughs> so, thought to myself, hey, dummy, be smart. Went down, bagged it out. 
as I bagged it out, I pulled on the top because I wasn't sure if this one was the original one, if it was going to be threaded in. Because I know there are some that are not and people have lost a screw down in the cylinder. So I wanted to be sure. And it helps when it's magnetized. So I wanted to be sure. So I, um, I held on this top end and pulled up as I screwed out. So as I screwed, I pulled, forcing this to stay down like that as it bags out pulling up the slack pull it straight out therefore I don't lose the screw and the one I'm replacing it with where is it at where is it at Damn, it just had. either way the one I'm replacing it with is the original style like this one so the screw is threaded in there so I won't have to worry about it coming out that's the driver's side I'm off to the passenger side we'll be back all right guys so I got the passenger side one in move some of this stuff out of the way so it's in that's the new one it's plugged in uh basically you just put it in there I'll show you on this one actually i'll show you on the one that i took out so go up here so there is a side on these rubber grommets right so the camera will focus so this side is not as thick or excuse me not as wide as this side right so this little piece right here makes the room and lines up with this right here back up a little bit so this right here so essentially You'll be able to see down in the valley. But essentially, it'll go straight down in there. And if you get the one where the screw doesn't come out and it's fixed to the solenoid, that's perfect. If you get the other one, you run the risk of it falling out. So essentially, you just go down in there. I did lube the, uh, let me go over here so you guys can see better. I like the point. Get my camera All right. Okay. So I did spray a little lube right here and right here, and then uh, just so it can go down a little easier. Pause. Uh, so it goes down, and when I go down there, I have my screwdriver in there, like so, and basically just move the screw around until it lines up with the with the hole, and the solenoids will drop down in there. The screw should drop down in there. Couple pull, couple uh, turns on the screw to get the thread started. Then I pull up on the solenoid to make sure I'm in there, and then push back down and you screw. So this is the driver's side. Try to get you guys a look in there. Can't see the screw. I guess from this angle. Oh, there it is top left down in there. It's in there and it's tight. Then you take this is my new my new rubber grommet. Spray a little uh well it's dry now shit. I'll spray a little lubricant on that one and it's basically gonna slide. It's basically going to slide. I'm trying to do this with one hand. I'm gonna slide right down over it like this. Like such, come on now. It'll slide right over it like that. Down on there. And then I take my block. Uh oh, come on Christopher. All right, guys, I got it myself together now. So I take my block and my hammer. Split on that side, tap, tap, tap. Split on the other side, tap, tap, tap. Top, tap, tap, tap. Bottom, tap, 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 until it's flush. Then you plug it back up and you're in the game. Uh, from this point, I still have to do the oil filter and do oil and then uh, I've already cleaned the battery up of all the corrosion. And then I'll start it back up and we'll see where we're at. All right, y'all, we back. This will be my 
moment of truth, I guess. Doing a little double checking. Uh, battery is hooked up. The terminals are tight. Get that over there. Connections are made. Oil is full. Filter is on and replaced. Drain plug is tight. Connector is on. So we about to see. We about to see if uh, this helps anyway. But at least let us know with the uh, with the idle. With the rough idle, we about to see. Goddamn battery. All I did was disconnect it. It wasn't even on. Shite. Let's see if I got a jump box. It's actually charged that can turn this thing over. The one I got, it's a little too small. But it might do the trick. It might just do the trick. At least I hope it do. Sap sucker. If not, I got a marine battery. Just want to use to jump it. We will see. Just let me let y'all see what I got here. I posted this in another video. It uh, it's good for everyday, day to day. But for what I needed to do, I need to get a bigger one. For like cars like this Acura, it'll be good for. And smaller engines is good for. But for what I need to do, especially when I'm at auction and I need to jump cars to get them checked out, it just doesn't cut it. That red light lets me know that we have a good connection. Set you guys down for a second so I can put the jump box up. Alright guys, so my little jump box didn't work. Put it back down so I can do what I need to do without you having to stare at my nostrils. So what I'm gonna do is I have a marine grade battery over here that hopefully ain't went dead. Yeah, I'm gonna try to jump it. I'll be right back. Alright guys, we got, we got my marine grade battery. We got 12.8 volts. Hopefully that should be more than enough juice. We about to find Alright, so my marine battery didn't do the trick. So what I did was just turn the accurate around, jump it off. I'm going red, black, and black. And 
set for quite a while apparently so I'm just letting it charge a little bit and then we try to jump it off. I did get a spark this time last time I wanted to get no spark. So we jump in here and see and hopefully it'll work like it's supposed to. If not just got to charge the damn battery. So let's see. Let's see firsthand. This shit don't always go the way it's planned especially on camera. <laughs> that bad boy started up though. The yeah, hacker we got it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, I don't know. Close the door, I got you. Why? Right, let's see how it idles. It's gonna tell the tale. Currently it's idling very well. Let's see what happens once it warms up. Right now it's idling pretty well. No ticking, no jumping, no clunking. This thing is not on the tick. That motor flush, man. That motor flush, especially for these fours, that motor flush. <laughs> that motor flush, you get it. My mechanic swear by it. I thought you full of shit myself. <laughs> and if you see this, D, hey, man, I thought you were full of shit, but I trust you on it, though. <laughs> I did it on the Expedition. I did it on the F-150. I've done it on this one. So ever since he told me, every time I do an oil change in one of these 5.4s or the 4.6, uh, 4 V8s, I was like, oh, 04 and newer, motor flush. And most of the time you get them and people don't do uh, the regular oil changes like they're supposed to do. So on these, what, I, what I've been told, if you're not doing it, the intervals at like every 3,000 miles doing that oil change or when that when that dash tell you it needs an oil change or that the oil viscosity is low, you're going to have all kinds of problems. It's going to start ticking and, and jerking and jumping and all that other stuff. So, yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, this cloak. This <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and take these damn jumper cables off, man. Take these jumper cables off. Do positive that once and then do the negative. That's all. That's all. And I was running on these own battery power. I let it run for a while. You thought it was, uh, it was kind of low. See how idle for a little bit. It'll be quiet so y'all can actually hear it. Guys, the, uh, the solenoids I did take out, they were original. I'm not sure if I threw them away yet. I don't think I did. Maybe I did. Anyway, they were original. Had Ford on them. So either they just replaced it and didn't do the oil change and replaced it with actual Ford uh, solenoids, or it's never been replaced. And that was it. So well, I'm going to go on the test drive a little bit later. I'll record that and hopefully it won't be uh hopefully it'll hold up like it's doing right now man. Uh I got the oil from O'Reilly's, it's really O'Reilly's oil, it ain't nothing special. O'Reilly's oil with a uh, with a Wix filter. I'm trying to find the, uh, the box, the filter box. I guess I threw it away. Uh, 
Yeah, it doesn't throw away, but this is the this is the filter that came up. Let's see what that is. The STP the S2XL. Now there's two, there's two different filters. One is smaller than the other. So the larger one goes for the 5.4. So larger filter, larger uh, engine. And then the smaller filter goes to the 4.6. And I'm only saying this because I went to AutoZone for the Ford uh, F-150. They asked me if I needed the larger one or the smaller one. I had no clue. Apparently they didn't need it. So I got the larger one. Got home, dropped the oil, oil filter off. Had to tear the oil filter off everything. It's the smaller one. So 4.6, smaller filter. 5.4, larger filter. Uh, next video, well, next video. It'll be a continuation of this video. I should be doing a test drive. So I'm gonna go in the house and warm up a little bit because it's cold and wet. And uh, I'll do a test drive. We'll see how this is gonna go. Get it to go through its cycles. And if it does, then we're going straight to the emissions. Get the emissions done on this bad boy. Uh, well, get it cleaned up, get it on the body. So I'll see you on the continuation. From here, we'll go to the test drive. All right, y'all, same day. New ripped up hoodie. Uh, gonna go run some errands in this navigator. Full disclosure, I did just put some, uh, some sea foam in the fuel tank. Couldn't hurt. Started to join up, let me see. See how it's gonna act, man. See what's gonna happen. We'll drop off some titles to the state. And, uh, so you people can get their titles. You gotta submit them to the state and the state to uh, issue them a new title. And, um, try to get this garage closed. I don't have a garage door open. Come on. But anyway, you gotta sit here in Georgia, you gotta submit the titles to, uh, to the state. And they will reissue a new title in your customer's name. So here's a startup. Let's see what we got going. Still running, started it out right away. Still sounds smooth. I know I got a low tire pressure. Suspension is off. All right. Tire some heat out. It's cold. So. I'm gonna run a few errands. Let me see him set a trip. Y'all be thinking about be shutting and driving. So we'll go off a trip two. Trip two is set at zero. I'm in the driveway. So we're gonna see how many miles I can get. Might not get much because he only needs some gas. But we're gonna see how many miles I can get. And uh, hopefully it will not act up. And hopefully it will all the monitors will be ready and um we can get this thing emissions tested call my detailer get him out here get a detail nice and cute nice and pretty and go from there i'm gonna go ahead and hook up the my cold reader here so my cold reader come on focus focus there we go Got my back code tools call reader. You should always have one of these. Yes, it is a Lincoln. Damn, look at it. Already. Pending. Shiza. Tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut this bad boy off. Cut it back on. We're gonna clear this code. And if it comes back, then we'll deal with it then. Any key, it's link. Let's see. Shouldn't have anything pending. If we do, we're gonna have to find a way to get that taken care of, too. We we'll have to look it up. It was a 345, I believe. Come on, auto link. Come on with your, with your little funk ass. We go 93, 94, 95, 97, 98, 100. Bingo, I got action. Start to join up. Clear with no codes, just make sure it's running. It's 
running, so we starting out brand new. So we're fresh and new. We're gonna see, do a little driving. Low tire pressure. I'm still at trip two zero zero. We're gonna go from there. I'm just leave it plugged up. Just leave it plugged up so I can check a priority, uh, <laughs> so I can check it throughout my drive, and uh, we'll see how it go. I know we gotta wait for it to warm up and uh, kick some heat out here. We're gonna go for there, so we'll be back. All right, family, we back. We been drove approximately ten miles. Still don't have a check engine light on. Yes, I know I haven't driven enough. However, if it were the P. 21 and 22 that light would have come on by now and none of my monitors have turned green yet and i understand it's because i haven't driven enough nor do i probably have enough fuel in here so i know i gotta be somewhere around a quarter tank i'm not going to do that now because i need to go drive the acura and i need some cold weather gear for my trip so i'm gonna drive the acura and hopefully i got that situation squared away where i had a uh a p420 go ahead and get it all the monitors ready on it so I'm probably gonna have to drive across town first I need to see if the store has what I'm looking for see if the store has what I'm looking for I need some freeze out or just some cold weather gear to ride on my bike but anyway uh as far as the navigator is concerned it's been running good did approximately 10 miles uh approximately 10 miles been running good a little bit more power no sputtering at an idle so none of the stuff that I saw before, uh, you know, I guess, like, like I said before, with these 5.4s and these V3s, that um, if you're not doing um, your oil changes at the 3,000 mile intervals, then they get clogged up. And that's how a lot of times these engines end up getting destroyed and knocking and all that other stuff. So, so far, so good. We're holding temp. A little cross town driving. I've gotten it up to 60, 65. Little traffic, little stop and go, cut it off, cut it back on. It's been just fine. So uh probably end up having to drive it some more tomorrow. And so for now, that's gonna be the end of this video. Uh, the P1, P22, with the misfiring and the sputtering and loss of power and cutting off at idle. I bought the two uh, the VVT solenoids off of Amazon. And make sure you get the ones where they uh they have the screws that don't come out. So the screws are fixed to the solenoid uh, housing itself. Or if not, then you got to be very, very careful. So I wouldn't go so cheap, but uh, I don't think I spent more than like $35, maybe $40 on the, on the two that I got. It came as a bundle. Uh, I'll try to put the link down in the description. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel. There you go. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. I always forget that, man. And then I remind myself when I'm done, like, dude, you didn't even say nothing. Yeah, so like, comment, subscribe. I can reach that 404-719-8355. That's McMath Autos. My name is Chris. The website is www.mcmathautos.com. That's M-C-M-A-T-H-A-U-T-O-S.com. Instagram, mcmath.com. McMavAutos.com. Instagram is McMavAutos.com. Facebook is McMavAutos. And YouTube, McMavAutos. That's it. Peace.